Welcome back everyone. Today's video is a one and a halfer. I will be talking about Uranium Participation Corp and the fundamentals I suppose also apply to Yellow Cake PLC. And for those of you that don't remember the series or if this is the first one, I just want to recap a few Uranium stocks with the second time around, I guess, or third for some, but now, from a perspective now. So, disclosure, as always, when I own it, I will tell you I own it, and I do currently own this one. Now, I have been using this one historically as a bit of more of a swing trader than the rest. Um, when it's at a large discount to NAV, I'm more inclined to buy, and when it's more closer to NAV, I'm more inclined to just go with the stocks instead, or different strategies. But the point is, right now, I own it, and I'll get into why. So this is a prime example of simple fundamentals. You're buying physical uranium. Obviously, you can't take it home because, well, it's uranium. But you are buying uh, a package of physical uranium that gets stored for you. And so if the price of uranium goes up, the value of the asset you're buying goes up. If the price of uranium goes down, value of the asset goes down. And historically, within a substantial, I guess, margin of error, well, margin of market sentiment, I guess I should say, the price of the stock or this uh, company or uh, vehicle has tracked the price of uranium. Now, I just said within a substantial margin of sentiment. So where does that come from? Right now, it trades at a 20% discount to the value of the assets of the uranium that the companies currently own. Now, I could say, or I could argue that this is because the market is fairly bearish on uranium or has had it with the uranium bull story for the moment because it doesn't seem to be seeing any progress. Whatever the reason it is, both trade at a 20% discount. Historically, this should be approximately the floor. Obviously, that's just one opinion, if you look at history, you could make your own determinations. But historically, you know, you're buying a dollar for 80 cents, not a tremendous amount of risk. There could be some arbitrage. And the thing is, there is this arbitrage that is slowly going on. But in the, and I'll get to more about that in a second, but just realize in the meantime, even though the price of uranium is a tad under 30 bucks, let's call it 30. When you're buying at a 20% discount, you're actually buying uranium for what amounts to $24 if the price was 30. Historically, there has been this, this vehicle has traded at a premium to its net asset value. When the price of uranium is going up and trending higher, people front row see the trend and want to buy it and increase the NAV. And in both cases, as I'll get to that in a sec, they can add value. So now to talk about the value add. This is a company that today is one of the more stress-free and feel free to own it and be patient stocks out there, well, uranium companies at least, because most uranium companies at these prices cannot add value by making a profit. Meaning, that some could add value maybe by buying some asset that's undervalued from another company or whatever. But on net, there's money being burnt and not much value being added. Here, and don't get me wrong, there's some very interesting, great companies out there that can add value in different ways. But in this case, the fact that it trades at such a substantial discount to their net asset value allows them to arbitrage their own spread, if you will, by selling uranium to buy back shares, basically selling their assets to have money to buy back 
the shares that are at a discount to the asset value, thereby reducing the, the spread, but more so just by adding value. And the thing is, if there was a large premium, they could easily profit by the reverse. So let's say it was trading at 120% of NAV. Well, they issue shares and buy uranium. There you go. Just add more and buy and push up the price. But, well, minorly, I say that quickly, minorly push up the price. It's not a substantial thing. Of course, if the market wants to give them money, they'll take money. If the market wants to make them contract, well, they'll probably fight a bit more to do, uh, against doing that. But they have been doing what is right for their shareholders, and I suspect that will continue at the pace which they can do it. Unfortunately, again, not a big difference, but unfortunately that will slightly delay the uranium recovery, but it will make it a more true and safe recovery when it happens. So this is just, for example, the net asset value, the top is in US dollars, and the bottom is in CAD of Uranium Participation Corp. And it's not really that difficult to make a spreadsheet that will tell you the net asset value for something like this. I suggest you do it. Um, just put in price times amount of pounds that they own divided by shares and do whatever currency conversion you need. It's really that simple and the filings are fairly regular. So you can track the value of as they make changes and what the value should be at different uranium prices. And more importantly, at current uranium prices so you know what discount or premium you're paying. So one question I feel like I'm going to be asked here is why this over equities? And by that, I mean, you know, the different uranium companies, junior miners, for example. And my answer would be, it would start with, well, it depends what your price target is for uranium. If your price target is one of the lower ones, or let's say if it depends what you're expecting from the equities. And I could see some that could do spectacularly well or not. And here it's just a simpler correlation between this and price. And when you're looking at the equities that are less risky, less price sensitive, I think this compares decently to some of those. And now that's not to say that the equities don't have more upside potential. They probably do. But they also have more risk in a lot of cases. And I think a better question when we're looking at why this over is, well, why this over cash or why this over some other commodity? And if we're looking at the role that it could play in those terms, I think the answer becomes fairly simple as to what room, what spot, what role this can provide in one's portfolio. So this is a name where I believe that if you get in at a substantial discount, like it's trading now, um, maybe more, who knows, but the more of a discount you can get to NAV at presumably uh, a price well below where uranium should be trading in the medium term or long term, then there's not really a substantial amount of risk here in that, yeah, the discount could increase, but it could decrease also. There could be a premium someday. I think there will be, but we'll see on that. But getting in at a 20% discount, your downside is just very limited. And in between now and when the sentiment may turn or when the price may move, the company has every ability to add value along the way, and it's really easy for them to do it. It's not getting very lucky with the drill hole. It's financial engineering, boring, but simple, and adding value maybe every day, maybe every week, depending on how, how often they're able to do it. And to that, I would suggest you looking at the exchange rules because they're different for both cases. And both managements are doing 
varying degrees of the same thing, as they should. But the point is, in this one, along the way between now and where we get to, you make little gains. Now, I do want to address the question that some of you are probably thinking of asking me, and that is, what if it never tracks the price? I mean, it doesn't now, and what if it never does? And that's a fair point. I mean, it's possible that it will persistently trade at a discount to its net asset value. The one thing I would point out, though, is if that happens, if, let's say, it forever trades at its uh, net asset value for this whole move up in price and then th past the end. Well, if that happens, first of all, I can't decide if that's insanely bullish or insanely bearish, meaning people will never really get bullish on uranium. I mean, in one way, in one way that could mean it could go up far more than it should. And in the other way, it could mean that, well, it never really gets going as much as it could, and the stocks, the, the equities, never really trade up to uh, where they could because, you know, people fight the move up the whole way and just never really get bullish on uranium, and the equities kind of are dragged up and then someone does something and mess mess up their chance of getting good contracts or whatever. Point is, if people never get bullish on uranium, well, I mean, I would think that that type of sentiment would impact multiple equities and not just the ones that hold physical uranium. Again here, I feel necessary to say in conclusion that simplicity can be good. You don't have to buy the thing with the most leverage or the fancy thing or the thing that needs to be permitted or or anything really. You can buy physical uranium at a discount to its already historically well, I mean it's already discounted price. You don't need too much more than that to think that this has a good chance of being a winner and can be a winner between now and the day where it wins. And until that day, and hopefully a few times in between, I wish you the best and we'll catch you next time. Have a great day.